Hello everyone and welcome to episode number 10 of Computer Crane Kick. The show where we sit down with rad people who are doing rad things. 10 friggin' episodes, dude. That means that 10, technically 11, rad people have been willing to sit down with me and have a conversation. I've come to really appreciate these episodes and the friendships that they have helped create. So if you're one of the artists that have been on the show, thank you very much. You make this what it is. Without you, there is no show. And I just truly am grateful for all of the friendships that have been born out of this crazy thing. Computer Crane Kick. As for today, we chat with the artist about the usual suspects and so much more. This is a really fun episode, so I hope you enjoy it. But before you get in there, this is a beginning. My name is Dread. And I'm Venturer, and this is Computer Crane Kick. What's up, there dude? We go. Hell yeah. yeah. What's up? What's going on, <laughs> man? Long enough. Yeah, we got it sorted, though. Wicked. Yeah, sweet. Nice to meet you. You too, man. It's good to see you. It's always, I, I always think it's rad when, when you see someone for the first time and you like have no idea what they look like. You just hear their music and you have this maybe mm -hmm. this preconceived notion of what they look like and you see them and you're like, oh, you're totally different than what I expected. But I actually, <laughs> I actually didn't have a preconceived notion of what you looked like i was just i feel like i haven't made enough of a footprint in the music community or in the synth community to like have people kind of making up fan theories about what i look like so well i mean it's natural to to just think about what someone looks like if you listen to their music though i think that's so true. at least that's true especially well, if you've been if you if you've been talking with them too that's that's another thing that's a good point well I, well nice to meet you thank you for Sorry. having me on Oh, I like what yeah, you dude. do. Oh, I'm, I'm stoked to have sweet. you, man. You're pretty when new you, uh, on the scene too, and like yeah. you've, you've made quite the splash in in my mind, at least coming in with some new sounds and unique sounds. I was like, All right, I gotta, I gotta sit down with you and chat. Plus, I just like talking to you. You're pretty easy to talk to, and you seem like you're Thanks, an, an intelligent person. And it's always Thank it's you. always refreshing talking to people that have good ideologies and shit. So. I appreciate that. Well, your YouTube video, your YouTube channel is pretty sick. I like the listening station. Thanks, when, man. <laughs> when when I saw my when I saw the hunt get on there, yeah, and I saw your reaction. I was like, "This is awesome!" It was so cool <laughs> seeing somebody else listen to it and having the the exact reactions I was hoping for. Oh, that's wicked, man! The song. the the biggest response I've got for those videos has always been from the producers. Everyone's all the producers are super stoked on it. So that's basically why I do it. It's it's super fun for me to make them too because it's such a uni mm -hmm. unique way for me to engage with the music. Yeah. Instead of just is. being like a passive listener, I get to actually mix it, which isn't isn't much. It's not like I'm doing a ton, but mm -hmm. it's uh it's it's just gets me engaged. And hearing it for yeah. the first time while doing that is it's a really cool experience. How I did it was I was fucking I did a DJ set on on Twitch just for fun. I was I just like doing them once in a while, just be like, okay, I'm gonna I want to listen to some music so i may as well just listen with other people that's awesome you should let me know when you're doing something like that on twitch again I'll, I'll, yeah uh, dude come, for sure come stop by i don't do them often because i this kind of took my focus and i wanted to put mm -hmm. the majority of my effort into these these videos the interviews yeah um when i'm streaming on twitch and shit i there's there's no fucking in between for me when i do something i put everything into it i want it to be like top yeah the best the best that i can make so That's awesome. um i need to like focus and choose what i want to focus on because otherwise i'll just try and do too much and then i burn myself out super fast yeah yeah no, I, I know what you mean and you're balancing this with like you know your whole other life totally work normal job family yeah. i'm sure same thing with Maybe. you though with with music production i mean yeah you're in actually school full-time right now for mechanical engineering yeah. yeah actually no i'm actually this year i'm i'm doing a work term so i'm like on a co-op 
oh yeah doing an internship so i actually have a lot more time to do music which is nice oh that's um, wicked so i basically work until 4 30 and then when i get home i just do my normal stuff like i just do the everyday things and i just gr sit down in my in my room and grind yeah dude i see like nine times out of ten it says discord playing game and then it says cube cubase pro <laughs> yeah yeah yesterday yesterday my activity was like six hours but I don't think I was on for six hours. I'm pretty sure I like went grocery shopping for like an hour or two. And right. Then went on. If you just have the application open, Discord will be like, this is yeah. where they are. Yeah. Even though I'm like probably just inactive. And I have my, my status is do not disturb. So you can't see if I'm like not away from my keyboard or anything. Right. Just always do not disturb. I'm pretty sure my status is always offline, to be honest. Probably says it is. Like, yeah. <laughs> I like but to okay. be incognito like that yeah not that people talk to me if i'm online it it doesn't really make a difference i'm just like <laughs> i don't want anyone to see me <laughs> no i that was kind of how i was feeling before this but then my roommates were like nah just put your face cam on and i'm uh, pretty easy to persuade i guess so and it's i think it's cool too because people can identify with a face you know yeah it's um it there there are i you know you see some people who who like doing the maybe a mask or something where they never show yeah. their face and but it's tough man there's there's a lot of people doing that now and i think it it has kind of lost a bit of novelty in a way yeah and i and i think I'm... it makes people not able to identify like you know gregorio franco no oh, okay he's a wicked that? he's a wicked producer from atlanta he does like okay. fucking doom synth essentially Killer, killer guy. He was actually just, on my show a couple episodes ago. I think it was like episode seven. Okay. Um, anyway, he said one of the best reactions he had when he was playing live was he was wearing a mask and like people weren't really getting into it, but he was like wanting to kind of have that persona. And then mm -hmm. he said he just like was wearing the mask and he got to a point where during the show, he's just like, oh, fuck it. I just want to fucking rock out and play my music. And he took the mask off and he said everyone like got way more into it at that point. He's like, since That's then, awesome. he hasn't worn a mask. And I thought that was a cool, a cool little yeah. insight behind how people can identify with the person creating the music. And when they see you enjoying it, they yeah. enjoy it more. It, may, it brings them into it. They're like, oh, this dude's fucking into it. And then it brings yeah. them into it. That's true, especially with live music. If you're gonna, if you're gonna wear a mask for like a live show, it kind of takes away from the the personality of the music, oh. and it just looks like a bunch of robots playing it. Like right. there's a video of Behemoth, the metal band Behemoth, playing at like Vakan Open Air or something, like this huge metal festival. Yeah, and like they they play without masks, but for like the last song of the set they put on masks and they're like playing really robotically and that's kind of what i think of when somebody you know wears a mask and right plays i i was considering doing that like putting on a mask i also think it kind of looks corny sometimes so yeah i, I think it can i can't imagine myself doing it but like some of the some are pretty cool like masks masked that guy oh that yeah producers, yeah he's got a pretty good. sick mask yeah that like uh oni mask yeah, those are yeah, pretty sick. Those are fucking but... cool. I think, <laughs> I think, yeah. There's uh, certain masks and certain people that can pull it off for sure. Um, yeah, I think it takes a full commitment. Yeah, if you do it, and it's got to definitely... be it's got to be all out. Yeah, it's and I don't it's think tough, I can though. fully commit to yeah. like a look, just because like, yeah, I don't know. If I like am walking around just normally and on, on campus or something, and somebody knows like the music persona they're like oh this guy wears a this guy wears a gas mask for his music right, right. what a weird what a weirdo <laughs> yeah yeah you'd be like oh man fuck uh, i can see yeah. that too you'd have it's to just, completely yeah. isolate your like real life yeah. from your music persona yeah. you wouldn't be able to associate yourself with it yeah and that's not i can't do that because i like to i like to shout it out on my personal like my social media totally like half the I'd say like a quarter of the followers are just my friends, so. Yeah, well, that's how it starts too, man. You know, it's, exactly. it's, it's tough getting <clears throat> getting your name out there and your music out there, but I think with what you're doing, you're on to something. And like when you sent me that one, your intro track for your upcoming album, yeah, you've, you've got a sound, man, and you've already figured it out. And that takes some people a really long time. 
So thank you, man. I appreciate that. That's that's really that's really something, especially when you can come into a genre that is so saturated right now. Yeah. There's, yeah, there's just a lot of fucking producers. Yeah, there's dude, a lot of music. Constantly new music. It's so hard mm-hmm. to keep up with that a lot of the times I find it can start to just meld together. And you hear the yeah. same the same pulsating bass line. You hear the same chords. You hear the same, you know, whatever. There's so many different elements that can sound very similar that when when someone comes out with something that's very different, like you have, it stands out even more. And you're like, holy shit, what the fuck is this? And that was Lilith when I first heard it. I was like, okay, this is fucking sick. Thank you. I no like worries, I honestly had no idea what I was doing with Lilith. I I was using all the stock Cubase plugins for pretty much everything, even especially the synths. Like, I mean, Cubase has this pretty sick stock synth plugin yeah. called Retrolog, which is like supposed to be like a digital version of an analog, like a retro analog synth. Oh, cool. So I was using that, and I like barely knew how to use it, but I just made this like sick bass. I'm like, okay, I'm getting somewhere with this. Yeah. And I just wrote like that the EP for based on that and i also bought this like little analog synth oh cool i haven't, didn't really know what to do with it though i think i think like the like that arpeggiating melody and sentience on my on lilith is uses this but other than that i haven't really found a use for it yeah because like these digital synths are just so fucking powerful they're like so good yeah it's pretty insane, this tiny man. thing is like yeah this thing's so dinky compared to those Right. I'm sure you could find like specialized uses for it. Like, um, for example, Wave Shaper, he will pick a certain synth or sound and know that he wants to use that for his next track. And then after that track, he'll try and go, okay, I don't want to use that again. And so he'll try and use something else. And it makes you experiment, especially yeah. if you have a lot of analog synths like he does. He's got tons of fucking analog synths, right? Yeah. It, it makes you experiment with what you have and then it forces you to use more things. So I think that's a pretty cool insight that you're like, okay, I've used this sound. I don't want to use that again, but I mean, it can be difficult because I'm sure as an artist, you want to have some cohesion with what you sound like. Mm-hmm. So it'd be difficult going like really far out. That's I'm a good sure. point though. I think I might try to, I might try to use it for some things. It's just like, yeah, it's a bitch to set up sometimes with, uh, Oh yeah. it's really nice. I really like having to be able to, being able to like edit everything to my fingers, not have to plug anything in and like, right. Record it again. I'm a really, I don't want to say I'm a lazy person with that, but I'm just like, yeah, it's a pain in the ass. Yeah. Especially well, Cause I don't fair, really man. know how to do it, but yeah, I'll, I'll, I'll I'm definitely going to try to use it. Cause I, I need to put this thing to use. Like. I spent money on it, so. <laughs> well, I th- I think there's another another thing there that can be talked about, and that's not forcing it. You know, if if what you're making is working, and you feel like this is the direction you want to go, and you just lean into that. You don't need to force something if what you're doing is working. I don't think you need to go outside of that and go, oh, I need to use this because I bought it. But and then you're like trying to force it. You'll use it and you'll come to a time when you'll find that use for it. Maybe you'll be fucking around with it one day and you'll hear a sound and it'll just be, you'll just be on to a new idea. But I don't think forcing something is always the best approach. I think sometimes things just happen naturally. That's true too. <laughs> you know, you make lots of good points. I swear every time we talk, I'm like learning a new lesson. Oh, that's, that's true. That's, that's awesome that's to hear, point. man. Uh, I point. like to pass on what I've learned. And that's, I mean, a lot through talking to other people and through personal experience. The main thing Mm -hmm. for me with making all the stuff that I make is I don't force anything. If I'm not Mm -hmm. feeling something, I just back off of that. And that's why I stopped streaming on Twitch. I just went, you know, stopping and, and taking a look at your motivations and why you're doing something and reassessing, okay, why am I actually doing this? And you know, if it's like, Oh, I feel obligated now because this is what I started and now I'm just doing it because I'm going through the motions. That's exactly what happened to me on Twitch. And I just went, okay, well, I'm pulling the plug. I'm not doing this because I enjoy it anymore. I'm doing this because I started it and now I feel like it's something that I have to do. Yeah. Yeah, that's true. I definitely, that definitely goes for myself too. When I see that I'm trying to force myself to write something or create something, it just turns out to be like a 
steaming pile of shit. Right. <laughs> like it's not it's not good. But then like when something clicks, like the thing I sent you, I'm I'm really proud of that. But the thing I sent you just now, um, that just kind of came out of nowhere after yeah, my man. trip to Ireland. I was like, <laughs> all right, I have I have some inspiration. Yeah, you went and saw all those like fucking big spires, and then you were just got in, inspired by the the choir sounds and the orchestra. So you're like, "Fucking right, so I need to make something dark with this." Yeah, exactly. That's exactly. Wicked, all those huge, yeah, all those huge cathedrals. I was like, "Okay, I need to make something from hell." Seen too much <gasps> heaven. <laughs> no doubt, we need to corrupt corrupt these cathedrals. <laughs> They're a lot nicer than the ones in Canada. So, yeah, I mean, we don't really have too much here for stuff, especially like the really in intricate Gothic detail stuff. There, oh, there are yeah. some, there's some cool stuff, but I mean, I live in a very small area. Like we, we don't have, we don't You're have out cool West, architecture. Right? Yeah, I, I live like eight hours uh, east from Vancouver, uh, really small oh, area, like 20,000 greater area. That's include, that's like a hundred kilometer radius. Mm hmm. Damn, not, that it's is not small. a big area. Yeah. And I live like in the country. I'm super rural where I live. But I mean, I've seen some pictures on your Instagram. It looks nice. Yeah, it's dude, nice. it's it's super nice. I'm I'm like super as much as I love connecting with people like this. I don't mm -hmm. like to go out and do stuff. So I'm happy with being home. Yeah, that's have, fair. Just chilling in my in my zone. I'm I'm super comfortable here. We don't have neighbors. I got I got acreage. Uh, yeah, it's I mean, it's what I like. Yeah. That sounds nice. Like that sounds super nice to settle down and do. But I'm yep. such a city kid. Like I just yeah, love man. going downtown and just doing stuff. That's fair. <laughs> dude. That's it's it's just a different upbringing too, right? I grew up in a pretty rural area that wasn't a city, and and oh, yeah. I I'm spent most of my life hiking and camping and just being outdoors. And now, like <laughs> I'd say, in the last five years. Um, my anxiety has like just exponentially increased to the point where it really affects me and I have to constantly work on it, but mm -hmm. going to the city overwhelms the fuck out of me because there's so yeah. many people. So I'm actually going to Vancouver yeah. this week. I'm pretty stoked on it though, because we're going to a concert, but nice. Um, Who you seeing? Wardruna. That sounds familiar, but haven't... it's like uh, Nordic folk music. It's like Viking oh, music. That's sick. Yeah, that's dude, it's, so sick. It's gonna be a wicked show. I'm pretty stoked. There's this band that came to Toronto called Highlung. Yeah, it's very similar. I wish I went to see them. I do they like do the whole get up, like the whole costumes and everything. Oh, yeah. yeah okay, have... I know I was saying I know I was saying that masks were corny, but no, that that is awesome. That's different. The whole... It's like I guess because it's like completing the whole image. Totally. If you're like a bunch of dudes in in like sweaters and t-shirts playing that kind of music, I'm gonna be like a little bit disconnected from the music and like the performance. But if you're like right on the old ancient Nordic gear and you're like singing with a with a bone cross attached to the mi like the microphone. Yeah, dude. I'm I'm gonna get I'm gonna like I'm gonna start praying to Odin or something. <laughs> yeah, man. <laughs> After and it. It's part of like bringing the heritage through the music as well as having all of that stuff. And it just completes the whole experience. It's, it's more of an experience than just like a, a musical journey. You're, you're going yeah. somewhere with that. It's fucking, oh, yeah. I listen to that music all the time too. We listen to it camping a lot because I find That's it's the awesome. type of music that complements the sounds of nature. You know, the crackle oh, yeah. of a fire coming through with like this deep, low guttural chant and this just persistent bass drum. That's just like, that sounds amazing. I really want to do that now. Oh, dude, do it. It's a good time. High Lung, actually, speaking of High Lung, I'm pretty sure they're coming out with a new album, and I'm stoked for it. I'm really, I'm really excited. Hell yeah. Because I remember finding like their a live video of theirs on YouTube. That's how I discovered them, just some, like, yep. some live performance. They're just like, it was sick. And then I got their second, like their newest album. Um, I can't remember what it's called, but. I have it now and I, I listen I listen to it a lot actually, but when I got it. I haven't listened to it much recently, but yeah, ever since getting into Dark Synth, I kind of just like my musical taste kind of just yep. veered that way and That's normal. Yeah. But I'm it trying to get to back too. into like the metal and stuff. Yeah. It's uh, you I kinda do this, you know? 
Yeah, yeah. I'll I'll go way out. Like, I mean, I've been listening to Synthwave for eight years now, and it's been like that's all all that I listen to is fucking Synthwave. Then mm-hmm. I got into Dark Synth, and um, that's actually what started me into Synthwave in general was Carpenter mm-hmm. Brute. So, okay, nice classic yeah and then i got into like midnight and the fucking just floodgates open and i went everywhere from there yeah and then um a few <clears> years <throat> ago i listened to uh we are magonia i just found them oh. randomly through spotify um discovery my algorithm was like here have this gem yeah, and they're that's when I discovered Horror Synth, and I was like holy fuck <laughs> what is this and We Are Magonia are actually responsible for getting me into horror as a genre, film-wise as well. Like, they started the whole fucking horror thing for me and set really? me off. Yeah, my girlfriend's awesome. probably like, oh, man. She she calls it a phase, but, I mean, it's been like five years now, and all I watch is horror, so. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, you got some sick tattoos on your hand. Like, they look oh, horror-themed. Uh, one's Dragon Age or- Inquisition, and the runes are all the signs from The Witcher. <laughs> Oh, oh, video game stuff then. That's oh, yeah. Sick. Or, yeah, I'm a, that's sick. Big I gamer. wouldn't say I am now. I used to be. I just don't have time anymore. Uh, yeah, yeah. No, same here. I, All this shit takes so much time, you know? Like, mm-hmm. the time that I could be gaming I'm sp- is spent, like, editing and making videos and shit like that. I'm honestly, not, not complaining, yeah, but... It's, um, that's honestly more of a, a more fulfilling um, hobby, in my opinion. I it's agree. Like, it's creative. Stuff. Totally. Yeah. Creative avenues are a better use of time, but sometimes I just want to fucking shut my brain off and play some goddamn games, you know? 100%. I played a game of CSGO before getting on. (laughs) Oh, nice, dude. I haven't played CSGO in a long time. I still play video games. Yeah, I just play with my my friends from from back in Toronto, but, like, nobody... I don't really know anybody out here that plays other than my roommate, but... Right. I mean, I don't play it often, too. I, uh... (laughs) Just, the, the games are so long. Oh so, yeah. yeah, I I played a lot of it though during COVID, like 2020. <laughs> I built my PC, and instead of like, there's an ant on my keyboard. One sec. Instead of instead of like using that time to write a bunch of music, pretty sure I just ended up playing a bunch of video games instead. Yeah, that's all right too, man. Sometimes you just gotta fucking do with. Like I said, go go where you want to go, man. Allow yourself yeah. to do what you want to do and spend time just doing exactly. what you feel like doing. Exactly. So Should many things that are constantly pulling for our attention that if you're if you're able to just do something that you want to do, good mm-hmm. for you. Just fucking do it. <laughs> yeah, actually, I did write a decent amount of music over COVID. But it was not venture stuff. It was all like... Venture came bef- like way after COVID, I think. Oh, I yeah. discovered I discovered Behemoth. Okay. I, my world has changed. That song is fucking crazy. <laughs> I still love that song to this day. And then from there, I just like, I would play it. I would play it at like, with my roommates when we were like having parties or we were drinking, just because like I love that song so much. And they, were, I think they probably got sick of it eventually. But did you bring anyone I've... into the world? No, not yet. I mean, I have one friend who I brought into the metal world, and then recently we went to a Carpenter Brute concert in Toronto, and oh, I think I'm. Yeah. I think I'm bringing him into the dark synth world, but I have to do a better job at sending him more music and like keeping in touch because we don't like I don't see him that often anymore. He goes to university somewhere else. One sec, somebody's knocking on my door. Forgot to take the laundry out. <laughs> Whoops. Son of a. That's why your Should've roommates were yelling at you. <laughs> take your yeah, fucking exactly. laundry. <laughs> Get these fucking band shirts out of my face. So that's how you got into listening to Dark Synth. Were you producing anything before you started producing Dark Synth? Yeah, I uh let me pull up my my personal band camp right here cuz I don't can't really remember all the stuff. You have started, something listed other than Venture? Yeah, yeah, like my personal stuff. Um I'll send you a link to it. Oh sweet. I'll definitely this. put it Can, in the show. Sure. It's just like my first and last name, Kentaro Dairy. Um, I, I would write like orchestral stuff. So that's kind of why I'm trying to fuse orchestral with dark synth now is because I have all these libraries on my computer that I, that I want to use. And I think it sounds pretty sick to fuse it together. Oh yeah. So like, like Draven got some cool stuff going. Oh dude. He's one of my good friends. He was, uh, 
the third person or second. No, he's the second person to ever come on my show, and we've become good friends since then. He's a fucking yeah, wicked you guys are, producer. Yeah, you're all in spine saw, right? Yeah, you, are, I don't. I don't Connor. really. I don't really do a lot in there. They kind of just brought me in. I'm not. I'm like an honorary member for the most part. Those boys do a lot of work in in making those playlists and. Mm. Oh, you saying that you're like the video guy for? Yeah, so. but I mean, I haven't really made many videos. Like, yeah. I'm more. I'm more of an honorary member right now. Um, my contributions are low, but um, we're working on some stuff. We want to make some some fun shit together. It's just trying to find the time right now. I'm working so goddamn much. But yeah, yeah, no, I. Are you working? How many days a week do you work? Six days. I work six days right now. We're, it's like a okay. major, a shutdown. It's what it's, it's what it's called, and all the plants are down. So we're just doing major maintenance on them. And I'm a millwright, so I fix shit. Yeah. Damn, that's brutal. Six days a week. Yeah. But so I assume more than forty hours, right? Oh yeah, way more. Unfortunately, <laughs> I work twelve twelve and a half hour days. So it's uh, and I have an hour holy, commute to work. Holy, holy shit. Yeah, so that's this, brutal. This is my one day. I hate off. the work. I hate the, like I hate this this lifestyle where we just have to work all the time. Like, I if, I might I'm gonna whine about the eight eight hour work days when you're working twelve hours, but it's like, dude, twelve hours your whole day is gone. Yeah, you don't have time to do anything else. And if you have a half hour commute or it was an hour and a half commute, no, it's it's about forty minutes. Forty minute commute. So there's an hour and twenty minutes off each day, just getting there and back. I that wake up 12 hours running. I wake up at 3:50 and I get home at 7:30. So I'm out of the yeah. house at 10 to 5 in the morning. And then so I get you're home working, at 7:30. You're working and then sleeping. Then working and sleeping. Yeah, that's that's my life right now. That's all I do. And then on my day off, I'm fucking doing everything that I neglected to do during the week other than all of the things that my wonderful girlfriend is doing, which is everything so she's basically looking after me on my days off i just do my meal prep for the week and right now i'm cutting firewood because we're going into winter so yeah i've been just chopping wood constantly yeah. but back to draven you were talking about the orchestral oh, yeah. shit you heard draven and that made you go fuck yeah what's this tell me about that yeah there's there's a lot of stuff let me let me let me pull up some of these spotify playlists that i've made for just see what my my uh inspiration or i think my biggest biggest inspiration has been um acro madness oh you fuck know who yeah. that is yep he's so fucking good he's so fucking good that guy is insane yeah I like i heard liberty years. alarm i had liberty alarm like just that was the first song i heard from him and just i think let me go to his spotify plays spotify account i think i have like 57 57 liked songs by, <laughs> by acromanus and that's probably only like a third of his discography so much music but yeah but yeah i'd say i don't actually know i didn't i didn't really listen to any artist and, and think okay i want to do orchestral stuff with my music but i probably did hear it like from draven and some other artists like probably we are magoni we are magoni uses lots of like um organs and stuff dude to their, amazing. their music and i'm like this sounds pretty sick but i want to take it to the next level they were the first like, ones doing... for me the we are magonia yeah. man they just like mm -hmm. brought me into a whole other world yeah so acromanus's album kaidan kaidan i should know how to pronounce it i'm literally japanese but <laughs> <laughs> that... and um alex and tokyo rose's akuma Oh fuck yeah! Also Japanese name. Well, those two albums fucking changed my life. Those were so good. And then Perturbators also obviously Perturbators. Um, wow, I can't remember what it's called now. It's the one with Venger on it. I should you know, know that song. I, I should know, but I don't know the album name. It's not. It's not Dangerous Days. It's the Uncanny Valley. That album by oh, Perturbator. Nice. So fucking good. Yeah, I remember I was trying to play it for my roommates, actually, and they're like, <laughs> they weren't feeling it. They like Venger, though. One of them really likes the, the song with the singer, Venger. Yeah. That's so good. What kind of music do your roommates listen to? You? They actually, a lot of different stuff. Lots of, like, house music, electronic music. One of them really likes 
EDM and like drum and bass. And they I don't. Really get into. And they're not into fucking what you've shown them. I feel like that's just a, a like a, a step away. Yeah, they they like they like it a bit, but you know some of it's a little too maybe I don't know heavy. It's just like it's like a little too off the charts, I guess. Right. Like they like a bit more. Like do you know who K Tronada is? I do not. He's this um, producer, like R and B kind of producer from Montreal, actually. Oh, cool! He's so good. He's so good. He makes lots of like good music. Um, that guy, actually, during COVID, when we were just cooped up in this house, we would play this this one um, like DJ set of his that, from Montreal. I don't know if you've heard of Boiler Room, but they do lots of DJ sets. Yep. And there was one K Tronada's Boiler Room set in Montreal. We would play it so many times. You have to watch it, man. It's it's fucking hilarious. Like the people in it are just so goofy, <laughs> and like there's so many characters in it. But it it's like such an iconic video now for at my house because we've seen it so many times that like that's basically what got us started with K Tronada. It's nice. Yeah. I feel like most people, if they don't like synth, they just haven't heard synth yet. That's that's my mind. I'm like, if you don't like synthwave, you haven't heard synthwave. That's that's yeah, it. How can you easy, not like it? <laughs> it's a pretty easy genre to like. It's a pretty easy genre to like. I feel like there's so many different sounds in it that you totally. can you can attach yourself to. Like, I'm not really a huge fan of like the the outrun stuff. Yeah, like the fair. just the straight synthwave stuff, but the dark synth, like where it's like really heavy, like Perturbator and Acromanus and Carpenter Brute. I really fuck with that. Yeah, like it it's... makes sense too because you come from liking metal before, and that was the oh, same yeah. with me. I I listen to metal, mm -hmm. and that's why dark synth stood out way more. And I, there's a lot oh, yeah. of metal fans who like dark synth. Like, someone yeah. likes metal, you show them dark synth, and they're like, "Yep, I like this." Yeah. <laughs> do you know the band Art? Do you know the band Archspire? They're from Vancouver. Yep. So one of their guitarists, I remember seeing a video on the other guitarist youtube channel they're both doing a video and one of them brought up i think he brought up carpenter brute he brought up dark synth i was like this guy likes dark synth let me see if so i like dm'd him on instagram I'm like yo can i do a like a cover of an archspire song i didn't get a response so oh well but oh uh, it's tough dude. eventually sometimes in the future, people are just super busy too and oh probably don't probably even check it yeah yeah exactly so it's not a big deal I mean, that'd I'll be fucking rad, it. though. I'm sure that you could look into seeing if there's a different mode of like um, communication you could open with them. Yeah, yeah, that's true. I, uh, I mean, I still ended up doing the car, the Carpenter Brute cover. Yep. And I tried to get, I tried to see if you'd allow me to put it on Spotify, but there's no response. So I was like, okay, I'm just not even gonna bother. Oh, I don't want to deal with like the rights stuff. So I don't I just know put what. It on I'm not sure what label he's on now, but I'm pretty sure it's a big label. Yeah, so I don't want to get I don't want to get tied up in that. No, you don't. <laughs> I tried to listen. I tried to post a listening station of Leather Terror, the first ever listening station I did. This was the uh -huh. this was my idea. Just I was drunk after doing a DJ set, and I hadn't listened to Leather Terror yet, and I had just done a DJ set, and I was like, I'm gonna throw the whole thing in my deck and fucking listen to the whole thing and mix it the whole way through. And mm -hmm. it fucking, I filmed it because I was already recording for the DJ set on Twitch mm -hmm. and I lost my mind. It was like the most fun I ever had. And that's what actually started the whole thing. But I tried to post it and uh, it was blocked. And I'm pretty sure it said like Universal or something for who had the rights. And I was like, oh shit, I didn't know Man. he was fucking signed to them. But that's, that's pretty big. That gives I could me be hope wrong. For, uh... I could be wrong. Yeah. But I mean, that's pretty crazy. I did get, I got like copyright struck for posting my turbo killer cover on on youtube but then i was just like yeah you can take the you can take the revenue i'm gonna get like 50 views on it i don't care every single one of my videos gets copyright and that's fine because i want the music to get it so if people mm -hmm. if um if they get an ad on my video mm -hmm. and it gets them anything that's awesome yeah so I, I i'm happy when people make it so it's still able to be viewed on youtube and they just get ad revenue that's wicked awesome you mm -hmm. can monetize the video that's great you're letting yeah. me use your your personal material through for something that I'm making. So that's yeah. that's my outlook on it. When it's hard blocked, yeah. then I'm like, well shit, I just wasted a whole bunch of fucking time making this. That sucks. I yeah. I love Carpenter Brute. Leather Terror, I think, is his best work. That's I've said that before. Most people don't agree with it, but I fucking love it because he leaned hard into horror for that whole album and 
I is Leather Terror the newest one? Yeah. Yeah, I really like that album. I think uh, Leather Teeth, I don't know, it's it's okay. It's not bad. But Leather Terror is really good. Like I like the I like all the the features like that Gunship song, the song mm. with Gunship and the one with Maker. the sing. Yeah, Widowmaker and Imaginary Fire, the one with the the oh. singer from Dillinger Escape Plan. Have you oh, ever yeah. listened to Dillinger Escape Plan? I have, yeah. They're so they're so good. Yeah, dude. They're so fucking good. So like what let me let, let, tell me about your mu- your metal music like knowledge. Like you said that you come from metal, so I want to hear about these bands that you like you would listen to. Just curious, I've, out of curiosity. I listen to the High Flyers, you know, the probably the most mm-hmm. mainstream and well-known metal for the most part. I listen to a lot of Lamb That's of fair. God, Kill Switch and oh, Gage. Yeah. Oh yeah. Kill Switch is one of my favorite bands, even still. I fucking love Kill Switch. Yeah. They're holy crap. They're they're pretty old now, aren't they? They're yeah. They're like a they're like veterans now in the metal community. Yeah. I haven't I haven't they've been off my radar. Actually, they have never really been on my radar because I've never been a metalcore fan. But mm. I did like I do like a, a couple of their songs. And then I really um, like uh, Mastodon. Oh yeah, yeah. They're yeah, one yeah. of my favorites. I they blew my mind when I first heard Mas- them. Mastodon's so good. And then just they're like really... there, I I can't really think of a ton right now, but I like Butcher That's Babies okay. and and shit like that. Okay. There's, there's a lot of I I was kind of getting into I don't know the any of the genres for metal. But mm-hmm. I was kind of getting into more of the heavier shit. Oh, Killer Be Killed. Killer Be Killed is one of my favorite fucking groups. They're like the super group. They have um, okay. the lead singer from Soulfly. Okay. Uh, I can't remember his name. Fuck. They have um, the bassist from Mastodon. Um, I'm pretty sure. If, oh, you know what? Let's just look it up. Okay. I'm not going to just guess. Yeah. Sure. I'm I haven't heard of them, guess. so I like... Oh fuck! You're probably gonna. But I don't know if you like them, but yeah, Greg Pusciato from Dillinger Escape Plan, Soulfly frontman Max Cavalera. Oh, Killer Be Killed! Whoa, this is. Um, Mastodon bassist and co-vocalist Troy Sanders and Converge drummer Ben Collar. Damn, that is a lineup and a half. Yeah, they have two albums out now, and they're both fucking unreal. I listen to them a lot. What's a, what's a good what's a good album to start with? Their first killer one. be killed or reluctant here. Okay, killer, killer be, killed. be killed. Yeah, it's killer. Ah, I didn't I mean to. <laughs> killer, but... <laughs> no pun intended. No pun intended. Yeah, that's... that's the metal I listen to, and then yeah, Carpenter yeah. Brute is what got me into it. Let's talk cool. about your music. What? Uh, How did you get the name Venturer? Where did you come up with that from? Let me see. I have just like a a note on my phone of a bunch of names that I thought of. Yep. Because I was like, I don't know what to do. Oh, that's fine. I wanted to, I wanted to do something like, let's see, let me just find. It. I wanted to do something that would be, like, good enough, like not not to, like, how do I explain this? <laughs> like, <laughs> versatile enough. That's the word. I I wanted to be versatile enough so that if I change my sound up, it wouldn't be like, why is this guy named like, Hellraiser making synth wave like dreamy synth way that doesn't make any sense like i like one of the more recent songs they put out cosmonaut is like more chill i guess it's like more outrunny or synth wavy versus my other stuff yeah space synth exactly and venture like that's a that's a fine name for it it's not like it doesn't it's not like weird to say venture it suits not like yeah exactly and that's why i made my my logo like not super i don't know if you can see in my room but i i used to do metal metal logos like like i used to do logos for metal bands you can kind of see them oh yeah fuck yeah dude you designed those so, like yeah so i drew all those by hand and i used to do them for for like like metal bands would commission me um nice that's rad so but that's why i didn't do a logo like that for for myself because even though it would probably suit some of the music that i'm making now it's just like I need the versatility. It's a lot nicer to have the versatility. Yeah, and that insight's good to have when you first start, so you don't box yourself into a specific sound. Because maybe you maybe you write a an album, and then all of a sudden you're like, you know what? I'm kind of digging this sound, and then you want to lean into that. And that comes back to what we were talking about before we started, of doing what you want to do when you want to do it, but then also feeling like you're almost prohibited from doing it because you're like. 
well, I'm fucking Demon Spawn 666. I can't come out with this fucking <laughs> random album yeah. that's f- fully into Dream, Dream Wave or some shit. Yeah. I don't know. I'll just make yeah, something. exactly. And I don't want to have to like make up a whole new persona if I wanted to make something else. Yeah, totally. That's Venture why I like Tone. Yeah, and Tone Box, like you know who Tone Box is? He... Oh, yeah. He makes a bunch of different kinds of music, and it's like nice because what the hell does tone box mean? It's just like just sounds just sounds cool. It's a box of tones, dude. Yeah, exactly. It could be but, any kind of tone. But he'll yeah, exactly. <laughs> Harsh tone or yeah, super uh, crunchy or digital st- tone or really soft soothing tone. Exactly, yeah, man. <laughs> yeah what were some of your other names that you were did you find your note they're they're pretty bad yeah oh i want to hear these uh uh, there's like agonizer antagonizer spectral phantom i didn't get very far my first one was pretty sweet my first one was venturer so i was like oh you can't see but my first one was venture and I, i just stuck with it yeah go for the first one right yeah no if that one you know, when you come up with a name and you kind of just, it keeps coming back to the forefront of your mind, I feel like that's the right choice to make. If you're like yeah. stuck on Venture and you can't get off of it and you're like, oh, keep, oh, yeah. I want to think of that and you just keep coming back to Venture, I think you made the right choice. Yeah. Yeah. It's nice. I, I'm definitely haven't regretted the name. I was thinking, like, what am I going to do that sounds good, but I'm not going to regret like a year down the line? And it's been almost a year down now. Uh, I guess not. It's only October. Give it a couple months, and then it'll be a year. But I haven't regretted it yet. So, so you your first album you released was December. No, like, it was. I started writing in December. I think the first song I ever wrote was "Revolt." Yeah, didn't you release Lilith in like June or something? Yeah, I released it in June, but that's because I was waiting for the the cover art to be finished, which oh, I'm right. glad I did. The cover art's fucking beautiful. Yeah, it's right there. Um, is that yeah? Is that for Lilith? No, that's the hunt. No, that's the hunt. Yeah. Lilith is this this picture on underneath your head. That's like from Lilith. Yeah, yeah, yeah that's right. Lilith, the character Lilith, I guess. Yeah. But um, yeah, I was it was my friend of mine. She was just like she had other stuff to do, I think. So she was um. I I just had to wait for it yeah. to get finished, and honestly, I'm glad I did. I had a I had the songs I think done by March or something or May. Yeah. But a month isn't long to wait in grand schemes of things for artwork, dude. I've been waiting no. for a long time and I'm okay with it because I just made sure I reached out well in advance, but yeah, yeah. I've been I've been waiting just to even be on off this guy's wait list for a long time. So who was this for? The Creep from 6 Feet Deep. He's a fucking unreal artist. Check him out on Instagram. And you're going to do an, an, uh, a sit down with him? Yeah, we're going to make something and it's for it's for a super secret project. Oh, that's what you posted on your story, right? On your Instagram? I don't know. I don't think I posted anything for my super secret project on my stories. Okay. Well, didn't you get um, credited on some album? Is that not the same thing, I guess? No, I don't think I was credited. I've done like photography for Draven and I've made okay. like um, just a an image for necromancer also a good oh, friend okay. of mine but i those are those are the only two times i've been credited because it's the only times that i've done something <laughs> oh okay all right well do you want to get credited on my album i need some voice chops well, f- yeah i'll do anything but i don't think i have a good voice for chopping i don't know no I'm, i guess voice chops is a bad term i just i'm gonna want to use like some quotes but i too lazy to find them any online i don't think i can find a lot of the things i'm looking for online so i would I be comes, thrilled to do when anything. it comes to that <laughs> i would definitely not, like some uh some vocal some vocal work done just like have some cool pre pre-drop lines or something i'll put my heart Even and soul like, into it too man i'll, I'll try okay. my hardest I'll, I'll go like full costume you know, whatever. <laughs> I got to get into the character. I'll be like living mm-hmm. as this character who's going to say one line for like three months before I get the energy correct to say this one line. You'll do like the Heath Ledger pre- uh, preparation for the That's Joker. Right. 
That's right. I don't fuck <laughs> around, man. I like I said, I go all in for the things that I do. So I can be... see you you're speaking to a skeleton right now and you've got one over your shoulder. I like yeah. the I like the whole setup you have going. <laughs> I've got a, there's multiple skeletons. There's also one on the boom of my mic. I don't know if. Oh, no, I knew that was going to happen. Oh, nice. Jeez, that's, that's a lot of horror stuff. Yeah, I've, I'm excessive, but. No, I mean, I've got lots of, I got lots of metal, metal things. Like, I literally have a Winter Sun poster and a, a, a Mayhem you should, flag right you here. You should see this room. I'll take a picture of my room after. I'm yeah. probably seeing it in my stories. Oh, no, the skeleton won't stay on now. Jack Skellington. He was just uh he was just perched right there, that's all. Oh, I'm sorry. Oh, there we go. No, Skelling. I was just showing you, man. Hey, let's talk about Lilith since you brought that up earlier. What was it like sure. writing that and and what was your idea going into it? Did you create the idea and the character for Lilith before you started writing or did you start writing tracks and go, "Hey, this is a fucking future babe. This is cool as fuck." I did have uh, like ideas for I had this whole I was thinking about this for a long time actually. I think well, well before I started writing it, I had this whole idea, this whole storyline um thought up. I was like really into the the cyberpunk mindset at this point, but yeah, I was just thinking this whole story of this like um tortured robot cyborg girl who like kind of turns rogue and turns against the creators just like kills a bunch of people basically pretty pretty simple but dark story and i don't know i have it written down on my phone what all the songs are supposed to represent but i think i have it also on my band camp each song has like it is a little thing yeah I'll, each song has like a little thing about it if you go onto like each track yep um that's like a little a little lore piece there, but if I go, let me just pull this up. Yeah, I didn't write it down, but it was basically just all these. All, every song was supposed to be like a different chapter in the story. Yeah, and like a different thing happening. That's why a lot of the songs sound different from each other, because except I guess Revolt and Lilith's Revenge are kind of similar styles. That's because they have similar story points, I guess. Yeah, that's cool, but man. Yeah, that's that's it. I just thought of a story. I don't have it written down. I have the one for my new thing written down more. I think you've seen a bit of that note, actually. But yeah, I I like having I like having a story behind the music a bit more than just writing something because it's easier to get some inspiration for it. Yeah. You know? When you were writing it, were there? certain sounds that you came across so you were like fuck yeah i'm gonna make an album with this like how did how did the creation of lilith start from a production standpoint uh, so let me see if i can remember the the order of the songs that were written that i wrote these in um pretty sure the first song was revolt well, yeah no the first song was definitely revolt um which is the fifth song on the ep the second song was endless agony which honestly is one of my favorite songs yeah, third just, song was, solid track. Third song was Sentience, I think. Uh, or it was Escape Plan. I think it was... Actually, no, it was Escape Plan. That was the third song. Fourth song was Lilith's Revenge. Fifth song was Sentience. And then, I forget, I probably wrote the intro and outro at the end. Yeah, your but intro like, and outros are always so fucking epic, dude. I love it. Oh, dude, I, I, I need an intro. I need intros for, like, albums and outros. It just makes it... I don't know. I just like. I like when the intro and I like. Sorry, an album has a defined opening and closer because it just feels like an actual story. Yeah. No. It it Versus definitely helps to to tell the story for sure, man. It yeah. Leads you into it and sets it up and then takes you out of it. Mm hmm. And that's exactly what I'm going to be doing for this next one. You've already heard the intro. Yeah. The intro. I'm going to edit. I'm going to edit insane. a bit, but <laughs> you like it. Oh, I'm glad yeah, you I like did. it, man. I'm glad you like it. I'm. I'm just hoping I don't get like burned out or lose lose inspiration halfway through, because like writing five songs is easy, but writing like nine, ten, eleven songs is. I'm planning for it to be eleven songs. Yeah, including the intro and outro, but the intro is already like three minutes long, so. I don't know. <laughs> hey, keep it though. Don't change that. Oh, oh yeah, oh yeah. That oh, intro yeah. is good... fucking so sick, dude. It's a good intro. 
That's um, something that you don't see as much anymore either. You know, when you used to have a lot of albums, like buying CDs and shit, there was a lot of the times short intros yeah. and short outros. Mm-hmm. But not anymore. They just get right into it. Yeah. I'm not really into that. I, yeah, I'm, I'm into little... both. Oh, I like a good... No, it's good, man. I like a good intro, and I also like when yeah. there's no beating around the bush and I'm just throwing fucking headfirst into the fire. I, I like it when tracks do that sometimes, too. Like, no fucking around at all. It's just like, first beat is fucking go time. Then I'm like, holy shit, all right, look, we're fucking in it. There's there's no wading into this one. They just pulled the floor out from under me, and now I'm falling through eternal darkness. That's true. That's I guess it depends on the the nature of the band and the, the release totally. like metal albums actually no i do like intros on metal albums depends on what the metal band is but sometimes if it's just like this really heavy metal band just gets right into it then it's like holy shit <laughs> yeah agreed this is like complete change of change of scenery complete change of climate right here but yeah with lilith i just designed that one like there's a bass sound that's pretty much used throughout the whole album um, it's like the main drop bass in Endless Agony. It's like the big blah, an escape plan. And yep. then it's like, the, it's like the galloping bass or whatever in Lilith's Revenge. I designed that and I was like, all right, I'm going to do something with this. Nice. And then I just ended up making those. Actually, I ended up making four, I guess three songs. Revolt, I had a different bass. It probably sounds a little different. But like you can tell when if you like listen closely it sounds a bit different from all the other songs in terms of just that bass sound because I had it mixed differently and like all the effects were kind of different because I wasn't, I still didn't really know what I was doing. Right. Then once I wrote Endless Agony, I was like, okay, I've get my, I'm getting my feet. Like I'm just getting my feet in the foot in the door here. I'm like, I really understand what's going on now. Okay. So you first started using, is it DAW or is it a DAW? What do you say? You can call it a DAW. I call it a DAW. Okay, I've never know. Some people are like fucking DAW or some. I don't know. I don't. Know. Yeah. I don't use programs. I, just, I, I don't know, software. man. I use the software. I just call it. I just call it Cubase. So you only started using Cubase last year? No, 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 no. I've been I've been writing music with Cubase since like 2017. This is probably like my fifth year using Cubase. Okay. Um. But and before that, I used Studio One because there's like a free version of Studio One, right? And then before that, I was like writing stuff on GarageBand on my phone. Oh, nice! So I've been like, what? What did you first write? What was like the first thing you started writing when you when you were using GarageBand on your phone? What What got you into oh, music production? Or, orchestral music, actually. Oh I yeah, I think was the first thing. Like two because... steps from hell type shit. No, it was like like I didn't really know how to use GarageBand. I was just playing around with like the autoplay features. And I was like, this sounds epic, <laughs> right? Like, and then I actually like got a DAW. I started writing some things. I think actually the reason why I got into writing orchestral music was this metal band called Flesh God Apocalypse. They I, have you heard of them? No. It's a weird name. Yeah, though. See, if, 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 if I see this is what I'm saying about the about having a name, if I had had a name like Flesh God Apocalypse, there's no fucking way I'm gonna be making a dream synth song, or there, there's no way no. they can play like an acoustic song. But actually, what's pretty sick about this band is every album they have a piano outro. Nice. Like they have a piano player. They're a sweet band. You should check them out. But they're like orchestral death metal, and their orchestrations are like just so crazy. And I'm like, that was what got me into it. So when I, so when I downloaded Studio One for the first time, I was in Germany, actually, um, with my family for like four months, and I was just like on my days, like at, in the nights, I would just open up Studio One and just play around with it and trying to make something. I wonder, I'm gonna look on my computer if I have the old audio files because I think you'd you'd find it kind of cool to see to see like the the progression i'll look after i'll look after this but yeah sounds good man that and then and then eventually i think when i got back from germany i was like okay i want a better program like i want an actual program so i bought cubase elements which is like 140 bucks it wasn't too bad because i think i got on sale um and i made a bunch of music with that and then a couple of years ago i think i was like dude i can't because cubase elements was I think stuck to 16 tracks or something 
like you can only put 16 instruments down at once and, was, and when i was writing orchestral music i was like i can't do this like the the work like half this is taking being taken up by the, the string section right so so then i got cubase pro for an amount of money that i don't even want to talk about but <laughs> i haven't regretted it yet it's super nice and then i kept making orchestral music and now we're here with dark synth i guess i don't really know where i was going with that but here, just tell me your introduction what how you started that was perfect man you told me the garage band introduction on your phone and now we're mm -hmm. in dark synth yeah i i like like i said i have a personal band camp page um let me pull it up Get yeah i'll link it here. too but a lot of it is like like the first song is electronic like just i don't even know electronic music second one is like lo-fi third is an orchestral ep fourth is like lo-fi fifth was my first attempt at like synth wave actually oh yeah back in, back in 2019 what kind of synth wave did you make in that one like uh, synth it was like wave? cinematic like, oh okay yeah i was gonna say was that like even your music now is pretty cinematic is that a... yeah it was like more of a like just a sci-fi soundtrack right song but I was so bad with like retrolog and the synth, so I was like, it sounds pretty, sounds pretty silly. Then the next one was this. I think you'd like this EP actually, um, really epic, like dark orchestral EP. Then another orchestral song that's like ten minutes long. <laughs> I remember I was like, I was like, I remember I was like, I want to write a ten minute long song. And it was getting so brutal by the end of it. It's only ten minutes and five seconds. <laughs> 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 but it was really fun. I think like it works. It helps having like a, a one minute long intro. Yeah. But, and then next stuff was like orchestral, or sorry, another space synthy song actually. The sounds a lot better. Then more orchestral, another attempt at synth wave. It's not very good. More orchestral. And then there's like some lo fi stuff. And then there's like a, the very, the second last song is like this really. I think this is really when I was like getting into synth wave. I was like, okay, yeah, I know what I'm doing now. But that's gonna be that's like that's the long lost venturer song. Hyperdrive. The one, the one before. Yeah, the one, the one before exactly. This is like, yeah, this is like a year. This is released pretty much a year before Lilith. But that was like kind of what brought me down the rabbit hole i think that's awesome into dude. making synth music so you wrote quite a bit do you feel like dark synth is your home you found it this is like what you've been working towards and now you're in the genre and you're like this is what i want to make right now at least right now i know you made the um, name venture so you didn't box yourself in but right now the I'd direction say, that you're going yes definitely um especially coming from a metal background and not knowing how to play guitar. It's been an internal struggle for the past however many years I've been liking metal. Did you because ever want to cause... learn? <laughs> I'm kind of lazy for, to teach myself, <laughs> but I know how to play piano like really well. So like I'm, I'm classically trained in piano. Um, so I was just like, oh, I don't want to, I don't want to have to like learn another instrument. I just wish I could pick it up easily and be given the talent. Right. Mm. But I like metal a lot. But this is basically like metal, but for with keyboards. So yeah. Um, and I'm gonna like with the new. I'm gonna try to fuse a lot of metal, like not stereotypes, but metal techniques. Right. Into actually, I speaking of metal techniques, I just listened to a Dav Dralion song oh, yeah. before getting on. He it just got uploaded by '80s guy. Holy fuck. Is it his this latest one? This guy is crazy. Yeah, it's like something... Zoth, Octo, fucking... I can't remember the whole thing. Yeah, just like some random name, but it's just so cool. Yeah, Dralian is wicked, dude. His music is just melting. Yeah, it like... Yeah, it literally melted my face. I had to put on a new face before getting on here. Yeah, I have to do that often after listening to Dralian. It's Dungeon Zoth Octo Terror. What That's... the hell is that name? Like, holy crap, dude. Yeah, that's crazy. I, I know he's like big into um, Lovecraftian type shit. That's like a lot of his inspirations. 
That's sick. I was going to have logo... him on the show too, but he's uh, he doesn't speak English super well. Oh, damn. Where's yeah, he so, from? Uh, I can't remember. I think it says on his band camp that I just had open that I'd closed. Where's Draven from? This guy was saying, I mean, I was, I was asking him for some mixing advice and, um, well, yeah, Dralian says from France, Draven lives in Germany right now, but he's from Greece. Oh, cool. That's sweet. That's sweet. Yeah. Oh, you're, you're Canadian. You don't know how to speak French. Yeah. Ah, that's okay. Yeah. I barely know how to speak French anymore. I spoke I like a... a tiny bit. I took it when I was super young, but I never, I never proceeded with it. I hated school when I was young. <laughs> <laughs> I don't I don't blame you. Yeah, I, I I took it in high school and I'm starting to lose it, but every once in a while you gotta brush up, I guess. I haven't had to use it out here, but Yeah, no, you don't need to use it really anywhere except Quebec. <laughs> yeah, that's true. That's true. It's nice to know that... another language though. Yeah, that's true. Oh, I wish I knew more languages. You said you're Japanese? Yeah, half Japanese. My parents you, sent you me speak to Japanese? A... No. Unfortunately not. It's it's hard when you got a white parent and an Asian parent, but yeah, my mom was like growing up. She, her parents wanted her to learn English as best as she could because like they want her to succeed in Canada. Right. That's what she says. So she like didn't speak a lot of Japanese growing up, I guess. Right. Well, okay. only to her parents, but like she didn't. She didn't really. She, like she didn't really speak it with me when I was growing up, basically. Yeah, that's fair. And and neither did her sister with my cousin. But they live somewhere that has a more like a stronger Japanese community, so I think it's easier to like regain that side, right. I guess. Like Toronto has pretty they have a really strong Chinese community, but there's no real like there's not a strong enough Japanese community, I don't think, for there to be like a Japan town. Oh, I, don't know. Okay. I feel like that's usually what dictates us like a really strong community versus not. Right. If, in my opinion, and at least in a big city, I know places like San Francisco has a Japan town and like a bunch of different places. Yeah. Which is pretty cool. It was pretty cool to just see that. Were you born in Canada? No, actually, I was born in uh, California. California. It, yeah. My my parents did their did school there, did their PhDs there, so I uh, I was born during that. Are you dual citizenship then? I am. Um, Nice. That's pretty cool. Yeah, I I grew up in Toronto. Yeah. The big the big city. My partner did too. She grew up in uh Mississauga, so not quite, but Oh cool. No, that's basically Toronto. You know, if yeah. you're talking to somebody this is what I've learned, especially in universities, like when you when you meet these people who you, who you don't know and you're from like outside just outside of a big city, you just say you're from the big city. Right. But I actually am from, okay, no, I actually am from Toronto, though. Like, I've never actually been to Toronto. I haven't been to a lot of places in Canada because domestic flights in Canada are so fucking goddamn expensive. You could fly other places in the world easier than you could fly places within that's Canada. That's ridiculous. And it's crazy because Canada's so big. So, mm -hmm. like, driving from Vancouver to Toronto is not a feasible option unless you're trying to do a road trip. Yeah, it takes, uh, I'm sure it's like 20 hours or something. Probably yeah. longer from Van from That's Vancouver. Crazy. Actually, it's way longer. It's way longer. Probably a couple days. Yeah, you'd be pushing a day and a half at least. I think like when when we were younger, we used to drive to fucking um, Brandon, Manitoba, and it was like twenty hours. So holy crap! And and Vancouver is further west than we are. We're we're f closer to Brandon, so that's it. Would be twenty eight hours. Oh, okay. to Fucking, to fucking Brandon from Vancouver. Jeez, imagine doing yeah. that with kids too like my parents did that with fucking four kids could you imagine being in a car Holy. with four kids for fucking 20 hours yeah that's i had that's a game brutal. gear i had a game gear you ever have a sega game gear how old are you 21 <laughs> 21 okay yeah you wouldn't have had a sega game gear but i i had like i actually my parents never got me any handheld like gaming devices i remember when ds's were like kind of big yeah, my my parents wouldn't get me one, so I had to like. I was so desperate for one that I would make one out of paper. Yeah, and like use a straw as the, as like the uh the stylus. Yeah, obviously didn't like play around with it all off because it's a piece of fucking paper. But I was just that's how down bad I was for like a a playable 
a handheld did, video did game. You, did you make the little thing that you did that with? You know those little paper things that it's like one, two, three, four. Oh, pick yeah, it. yeah, all the time, all the time. Yeah, pick that, and then it's just like fuck you. You're like, oh shit. <laughs> 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 that was your DS. No, my yeah. We had a Sega Game Gear because I'm sure it was to shut us the fuck up on long road trips. But I played the shit out of NBA Jam, fucking nice. Sonic. Have you seen um, the movie It Follows? No. It's like an indie horror movie about like this demon that gets passed on by people having sex with each other, which is kind of funny. It's like an STI demon. I was going to say that. It's an STD, okay. sexually transmitted <laughs> demon. <laughs> exactly um yeah so i don't know the the music in that is really good though and it kind of reminds me of old school horror yeah i think i i think that also definitely lays like laid an egg or like a seed in my brain for just the kind of music that i really like yeah because i remember watching that movie and i was like holy fuck that theme is so good oh nice i'll have to um, check it out now you know who does it who does the score yeah let me let me find it let me just find the actual song. I'll send it to you. It follows emotional motion picture soundtrack. Have you ever wanted to do anything like that? Like, what would do you, you mean? Like sound, like a soundtrack. Would you ever? Oh, is that dude, something you would yes. like to do? Yeah, that is, that is, I, I wrote, like I said, when I was writing my personal music, it's all, a lot of it's soundtrack stuff because I like just movie soundtracks, like epic movie soundtracks. Yeah. And I was like, you know, Do you have a favorite composer? Soundtracks. Um, I mean, I could go generic and say Hans Zimmer, which is, you know, he's really great. Hans Zimmer is definitely up there, but I oh, can't think answers. of. I can't think of like a. I can't think of a composer that I really, really like. There's, just like movies, mm -hmm. movies with soundtracks that I really like. I let me let me take a look on my uh my computer i like a lot of this i haven't listened to in a long time though because like i said i've just been doing synth stuff for the past fucking year and a half it feels like it feels like i've just been like in this little little circle of synth yeah feels like that it. sometimes it's hard to get out of it too but mm -hmm. if that's um, what you want to be listening to it's rad that's like all i fucking listen to yeah yeah exactly honestly i don't have a favorite i don't have a favorite composer they're all i just like like movie soundtracks you have like, a favorite have heard... movie soundtrack um probably probably interstellar that movie is oh. just amazing dude cornfield that... chase that track is one of my favorite tracks yeah there's another um oh what the hell is it called it's like on the bonus like on the bonus version, I think it's called No Time for Caution. Yeah, that piece is amazing. No yeah. Time for Caution. Um, yeah, Hans Zimmer. I'd say he's probably my favorite composer. The Pirates of the Caribbean soundtracks. Just yeah. the like Davy Jones, the one with Davy Jones in it. I think it's the second and third ones. Yeah, Davy Jones' theme, so good. I'll have to with listen. like the. It's got like a music box melody. It's just really nice. Oh, it's got yeah. organs. There's like I'll a have scene to just of him. Watch those. Those are great movies. Yeah, they are great movies. Pirates of the Caribbean. Great movies. Yeah, dude. What's next for you? What's uh? What's next for Venture? You know, writing an album right now, or trying to at least. I have two songs. I have like the whole thing thought out, and like basic ideas I'm gonna be based on this. Dante's Inferno. Oh, nice. That's like, or loosely based on it. I'm basically just like, you know, hell. Yeah. Make some music that sounds like it could be a soundtrack to hell. <laughs> it's um, right up my fucking alley. <laughs> exactly. And right up mine too. So um, that's going to be, I like having, like I said, I like having themes to the, the music. Makes it easier to write things. Or totally. at least makes it easier to finish things. Um no idea when that's going to be finished though um other than that i don't know it's nice that i'm not in school right now so i can just like focus on music on my yep. downtime instead of having to you know, grind exams but i think yeah. next year like next september once next september rolls around i'm definitely going to be a little bit more under the radar but we're not going to think that far ahead 
No, I right no need to. Exactly. Focus what on what you're doing right now, and, and that's exactly. that's all you need to do. Okay, let everyone know yeah. where they can find you. Yeah, so venturemusic.bandcamp.com. You can find my Instagram, Venture Synth, um, Spotify, Venture, Apple Music, Venture. I don't use Apple Music, but you can find me there. Probably yeah. other streaming services, whatever DistroKid lets you do. YouTube Venture. Um, Twitter Venture. I don't use Twitter that very often, but that too, I'm sure. And yeah, I don't know. That, that's about it. Discord? No, I'm not gonna. I'm not gonna leak my Discord, but <laughs> Discord. But no, can cancel that on... one. <laughs> <laughs> you can find me on like Discord servers, like the Night Ride FM server. I don't really go on that anymore, but it's a sweet server for finding artists and synth artists. There's a dark synth server. There's also a synth prods server. That I want to shout out actually because there's lots of great people on there. Nice. Oh, yeah. um, What's that server called? Synth prods with a with a Z. I'll send. There's a playlist that they made for like for this um like server i'll actually send it to you right now it's great um lots of lots of great artists lots of great people actually the person that i did the collaboration with i met through that server oh yeah and then he he like he kind of reached out to me on it he's like hey do you want to help me finish this song nice, i was like dude. sure uh what else then there's my friend uh who's server retro grooves i don't know there's a lot of them a lot of them it's a great it's a great tool for like meeting people on the internet oh yeah man okay dude yeah that I was look forward kind of to... no it's all good that's where they can find you and and yeah. plug in another server that's brought you a collaboration that's always rad for people to see different places to meet people and to to talk to like-minded people and fucking maybe even make some music with someone so hell yeah dude hell, that's wicked hell yeah well thanks for having me man this was super fun yeah, I appreciate you taking the time, man. It's been wicked. Now look at you go making it all the way through the video. Please remember to support the artists. That's the main thing. If you like their music, support them, buy it, stream it, follow their social medias, all of that good stuff. And if you liked what you watched here, please subscribe and be well.